Uh, I don't know. What are you Just, working on? You um, I was I working know. on the, uh... Fuck all. Again. Hmm? Uh, Fuck all. <laughs> again. Every day. Alright, uh, one of the things I have to do this week is sort out this uh, broken uh, race car chair for my friend John and the uh, Lotus 57 that we uh, repainted and rebuilt a couple of years ago. And the chair has gotten damaged, so... I don't know, not a large job, but uh, kind of a fussy fiberglass repair, so we'll get started with that. So I'm just going to rough it all in, V it out, you know, fill it in, and then we'll, uh, we'll feather and sort it out thusly. So, I won't make you watch the actual grinding and nonsense. So, all I did is V it out, fiberglass there, big, just you don't see the back of this, so I just made a huge hand. John asked me if I could reinforce it. It keeps breaking in the same place. Fair play. Reinforce there, ditto here. So now, I'm going to put a little bond over there, blend the repair out, and it's ready for primer. And uh, I thought since we're painting black, let's get started on the Renault 5 hood. Um, a lot of hail damage, as we saw. and. The paint is just so chipped up and there's rust and chips all over it, so we started doing some PDR on it and I was like, the paint's cracking, it's so old, I just thought to hell with it. There's literally like 400 dents in the thing, so just kind of giving her a little sanding here. We popped them out about 80% of the way, so you're going to need very little filler on them anyhow, but sanding to do there. One there to do, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna do that at the same time. Uh, I just want to squeeze a couple of these little jobs through, and then uh, we will get back and get the rest of Laura's car painted here pretty quickly. You know, the trick I think if you got this many projects is as long as we're moving something ahead, move all of them ahead a little bit, or or stop everything and just work on one, it doesn't really matter, but not really feasible to bring the Renault in here right now and paint the whole car but it is feasible to bring the hood in here and just do a couple little things so we're going to carry on with that I'd like to have this and that in primer you know reasonably soon here but probably do some more body work on some other stuff as well but first I want to sand this oh because then this is done then yeah get, then it's ready for primer yeah but we're just trying to organize it won't need any more uh, not really. Well, you you put you you can block out hail with hey, yeah, that primer. You got enough primer, yeah. 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 This is way all easier. Rock chipped. Yeah. So yeah. you weren't gonna save the no. paint anyway. No. I was like, I could mud this out in two hours, or yeah. I could spend thirty hours trying to do PDR on yeah. it, and then paint it anyway. Yeah. On a car that's worth five grand, who gives yeah. a shit? Yeah. So that's all. Okay. So, That's I'm going to uh, bugger off. Everything's okay? Yeah, no, we appreciate you stopping control. by. And, uh, yeah, we put the Buick engine together last night. Uh, okay, and we got a coat of primer on the Renault hood today. And a bit of primer on the seat for my friend's Lotus. And there we go. So, I figured, well, they're both needing primer and they both need to be painted black. So, we will... Uh, get busy on that okay let's get this uh, Renault 5 hood painted today uh, obviously just painting the outside of it so I'm going to mask the inside off as much to keep the dirt away from the outside as to keep the overspray off uh, not much to report it all came out very nicely and for a daily driver it's going to be just fine
we go. Another bit of that job done. Looks pretty good for a uh, quickie. And there. The thing with hail is no matter how nice the rest of the car is, if there's hail dents, that's all anybody's going to see. So, gotta fix the hail. And got the old chair repaired and sprayed, and so that's ready for John. Hey people, we're back. Getting back on the Fury anyway. I've uh, gone ahead and cleaned up the grill uh, with some extra fine steel wool. Uh, this area here is actually painted silver argent in the middle, not over chrome. So we cleaned that up and uh, the paint up here has kind of taken a beating over the years of use and since we painted most of the rest of this car I figured I'd give it a shot of some black. So we're going to do that and um, get on probably cleaning this guy up next. Got some painted parts hiding in the interior. So we're going to grab those out and look at getting those installed. All right. Okay, some of the pieces are coming together here. Attached the bottom bar to the back of the grill and the next piece which is kind of a large flat bottom piece right here has to get installed right underneath here kind of runs on top of this piece but underneath that piece and that's not happening until I drop the bumper so I thought in the meantime I would knock out cleaning up this front emblem, front grill emblem. And we have our Mopar orange, crappy white, and some real red. So I'm going to slap those together, see if I can uh, paint inside the line still. And uh, get that going while I'm waiting for the bumper okay bumper is removed grill looks uh, kind of vacant over there got a few pieces thrown together and finished the resto on the center grill badge so yeah we can go ahead and stick that in the grill now and uh, try putting the grill on see how it goes okay we had a pretty good and long day. Bumper is back on. Car. Things are kind of set up nicely there. And we have the grill mounted back inside. Looks pretty sweet. This looks pretty sweet. If everyone's getting excited that those the blue color is wrong. That's Mopar turquoise for the engine. I thought it'd be kind of cool to put that on there because I love that color. And, uh, and well, it's my car, so I kind of get to do it my way. All right, that's, uh, that's it for today. I have one more piece of chrome to put in here, but I'm missing a couple clips, so I have to figure that out. I gotta go through now and paint these individually black. I had left them on the car obviously and painted them red. Go over this guy too. Paint him black again. Just dress up a few things so everyone's kind of on the same level. But I'm uh, feeling pretty good about that so far. It's starting to look like a car. That's <laughs> 11 beers. I don't know what that, everybody's so worked up That's why. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of fucked up. Uh, oh, okay, you're free to go, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice evening. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, never mind, we're good. <laughs> All right, leaving work at lunchtime to go check out some sweet cars at um, I Pull You Pull, just up the road from work here. So, uh, <laughs> take an extended lunch, maybe. Uh, let's check out some of the classics that they have. It's a little bittersweet, because I mean, sad to see them in there, but I guess some of them can yield some parts to other cars. Um, anyway, I hope this works out. Talk to you guys. 
Hey, old 1971 or two Monte Carlo. Pretty stripped. <laughs> a lot of goodies for people to, to take. Thank you for any of They've already taken them, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Poor old girl, hey? Oh, a 68 Plymouth Fury four door. Wow. Trailer hitch and all. Taillight just still in there. No engine, no front clip, no dash. Pretty stripped. The way she goes, I guess. Anyways, cool though. These plumes are so sweet. Yeah, man. Cool torpedo bag. What is this, a Chevy? It's a Pontiac Chieftain, 1952 or three. Cool. Good parts. <laughs> That's sweet. Bumpers are in there. It's got the silver streak on the hood. That's cool. Oh, 72 Plymouth Fury four door. I know a guy that's got one of these. Yeah. Partsy, of course. Four door. That's sweet. <laughs> yep. Wow. Cool. Oh, still some parts left. 67 Ford Custom four door sedan. Wow, trunk lid's good. Parts car hit with the forklift because they don't care. Look at this. Oh, dash is kind of there. Seat set. Well, at least someone got parts out of it. I guess I have to look on the bright side. Wow. 67 Ford. Neat. Well, oh, moving along, I guess. An old, old truck of some sort. Was it international or is this? No, it's a Ford. 50s Ford. Of course, when we took the, the front clip off of it. Well, good parts mobile. For whatever's there. It's a little, a little warmer today than it was yesterday. I tried to do a video yesterday, but it was brutal cold. And hopefully this works out. Volkswagen Type 3, Fastback. Some Volkswagen nuts got some of the parts. Cool. Yeah, I always like these. They're neat. First shop I worked at was a Volkswagen shop back on Vancouver Island. It's pretty fun. Learned a lot. Did the knowledge stick? No, it didn't. <laughs> oh, with the remnants of like a 40s Ford or. Ah, the fenders are. She's throwing me off. Truck of some sort? Oh, yeah. Is that a 46 Merc? I think so. Huh, cool. Back to the Plymouth again. Poor thing, there's the sun. Good, the sun's coming up. Tomorrow, tomorrow, here we go. 53 Pontiac Chieftain. Poopy, four door. Cool, six cylinder engine is still in it. She's a parts mobile. <laughs> yeah, wow. This car is for sale. This old Tornado was for sale for a while, but no one bought it, so guess where it ended up? Here, death row. Awesome front end. Front wheel drive. Yeah, once these are gone, they're gone, guys. You know, that's the end of the line. So see the old cars before they end up here. This one's a good old parts machine. I know where there's another one that a rock fell on it. Roof is wrecked. Here's an old bump side forward. Another parts parts machine. This is cool. 53 Chevrolet. Oh, I love this. It should not be in here. Sorry about the shadows, guys. Oh, man. Oh, this is neato, hey? Wow. Some chrome trim and bits and pieces. Yeah. It's even got the taillights in it. Maybe it's a recent arrival. Maybe. Oh, I'm hoping the snow melts soon. We're still sick of winter here. Chevrolet. And someone hacked the roof off an old 65 GMT. Which happens. Not much left in this. Some doors in the back. One of my faves, 
big Lincoln, 73 Lincoln. Hook calf skirts. Oh man, this looks sweet. Let's check out the front end. Let's check out the interior. Oh, Lincoln, man, what a car. Wow, headliners almost. Oh, except, well, never mind. Mosey's got to it. Oh, did they ever? A <laughs> tracks are there. Oh, A track cassette adapter. That's cool. Lincoln, baby. Yeah, these things are so sweet. Big monster of a car. Oh, I love them. Ah, poor Lincoln. Chevy 2. It's like a 62 or 63 Chevy 2. Nova or is it Acadian? In Canada, we had Acadians and Invaders and such weird Pontiac cars that were a Chevrolet based, I think. I mean, I don't know too, too much about them, but they're neat. My dad had one for his first car and he liked it. Yeah, neat old thing. Canzos or whatever they're called. I, there's a bunch of different names for these cars, as you guys probably know more than I do about them. But fun, they make it little drag cars. And an old 50 Mercury two-door hardtop, which is sad. Someone got some good parts off of it. The dash is wild. <laughs> cool. Oh, there's the hood sitting on the ground where people can just step over it. Yeah, old 50 Merc. Not much left of that one. This is cool. 61 Mercury or Monarch? I think it's Canadian only Monarch. Another rare, but who cares car, right? Yeah, Meteor or Monarch. I think it's a, I think it's a Monarch. Oh yeah, those taillights are crazy. Sweet. Oh, and a Valiant Wagon. Poor old thing. No one bought it, so it ended up here. Sorry about the close-ups, guys. Hands are getting cold. Okay, 63 Valiant Wagon. Parts, I guess, yeah. I mean, these guys actually do sell cars. I will give it to them. I give them that, but they do sell cars. If you got a little bit of, deep, they're expensive, but if you want something bad enough, like this Vauxhall Cavalier, these are so weird. Poor thing. Super cool styling. Let's check out the rear end of this thing. Oh, actually, the front end is full of parts. Yeah, that's neat, eh? The dash. Cool. Wow. It says it's 1960 on the tag, but they're never right. So who knows? Cool. Oh, 57 Dodge Plodge Regent. Plymouth body, Dodge clip. I already snagged some parts off this guy already. I mean, I've got a bunch of these things. I don't know. It's cool though. Parts will be over. windshield's any good? It's got a six banger engine. That's cool. Love these things. All right, let's walk along. See if I can find some more. G body time. G body, G body. My old boot wagon. Awesome. Look at that trim clad yellow, hey? <sighs> these are actually getting scarce, you know, the G bodies. I'm glad the guys saved them. Brown interior, just so you guys want to see. Still a classic, right? Not a blue wagon. No front hood, and there's an engine in there, but who cares what it is? Okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Speaking of G bodies, let's just head down here. Oh, yeah. There it is. Cutlass. 87 or 86 Cutlass. Good parts car for somebody. A little six banger in there still. Oh, buckets console? Oh, no console, but buckets. High back buckets. Huh. Okay. I had to show you this 66 Cadillac limousine. I mean, people have been rifling through it already. 
Like there's a cooler sitting on the ground with the beer skis in there and trunks full of, like there's a project gone wrong. Hubcaps, trim, pieces, like good luck putting this thing back together. Well, you won't because it's in the wrecker. Unless if you're ambitious and you will have deep pockets, but it had like a corner seat or I don't know. No, that's the back seat. I think it's from an 80s car though. Rear bumper, 66 Cadillac. Anybody need 66 Caddy parts? I don't know. Engine's been robbed. That's huge and cool. Yeah, the poor thing. Oh man. It's so cool. There's a kind of like a police car style Caprice from the Guiding One. neat and here we have a oh poor old little two-door 70 heat caprice impala that's cool poor thing shouldn't be in here i say that about everything though yeah it's got that cool glass that wraps around in the back yep that's uh Death row for her, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this big wagon. Okay, that's rough. It's another Impala wagon. Just partsy mobile. Like a, yeah. <laughs> cool, we're in the GM row. Yeah, cool. Camaro, bro. 74 Camaro, 75. <laughs> These things are just, a lot of them are just beat on so badly. But now guys are kind of realizing, you know, that they're kind of getting to be collectible. Bucket seats, and it's all, it's been pretty picked over, guys. In the front windshield's toast. <laughs> okay, let's move along. Ah, modern crap, modern crap, modern crap, modern crap. You can delete this part. Oh, <laughs> the crusty demon. Big old 81 Fleetwood. Wow, cool. That's neat. Good parts, Caddy. And I think a wreck of an old T-Roof Corvette. Sad. Sad situation, burnt. Oh, poor guy. Hopefully, he got his insurance money. <sighs> Someone had fun with this Cadillac. The interior is not horrible either. Not most either. Tranny pan sitting there. Cadillac. These are big money cars when they are new. Ford LTD. From Victoria. Boxy, like 85 or so. Oh, we have a memory of it here. It'll be the memory bank. We even need parts for these Panther cars. I think they're called Panther cars. Yeah. Yeah. Nice little brown Ford. Modern chunk. Are, Sable, are Tauruses becoming rare? Eh. Don't answer that. No, not the... The Steva. No. Can't get too upset about that, I guess. Marquise, four door, 84 Marquis. Good parts, doesn't even look that rusty. That's neat. One thing about this record is they kind of keep the old stuff around for a few months before it gets crushed, so that's cool. Yeah, this is one that I, I really wanted to, well, I started taking parts. It was sad, it was sad about my work. I should have asked about it, but. You know what? It ended up here. These are for a parts car. It's a really clean 78 marquee 460 car. Engines in it. Leather interior, huh? Yep, it's now parked.
Moment of silence. Oh, guy's coming for me. Better move. Pretty clean 80s Lincoln. Town car. That's sweet. Yeah, not bad. A Daytona and a minivan. I mean, I don't know. I'm grasping for straws here. <laughs> hey, come back. Come back, bunny. Oh, you led me right to the Lincoln. Someone's already, oh, it's got the aluminum rims on it. Oh, that seems a piece, eh? What a cool bittersweet color. I think it's called bittersweet. Huh. Okay. Old town car. This one's robbed the back bumper. Or it fell off. Trunkland's toast. Might be here for a little bit if anybody needs stuff off of it. Oh, it tends to work. The Villa interior, dash still hackied. Yeah, was not taken care of. Orange Lincoln. Huh. Another Panther Crown Victoria LTD. It's, yeah. <sighs> Okay, I got the uh, 401 Buick moved over to the shop so I can get started on it. It's got some Ford Blue all over it. That might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. I did just put some pressure on this guy. And things are moving, but it sounds really dry in there. So I'm going to pull these plugs out, uh, shoot some oil in there and uh, start tearing it down see what we find out find inside this thing so kind of exciting noticing a few things as we um, as we tear down some of you may notice the troubling bolt in this unit is just not a problem at all it's really nice o-ring is still nice and soft in there rubbery i know there were comments about these two little ports in the intake uh, something to do with an exhaust crossover these look like they've had a performance mod already and have been plugged there we are so that's cool as you can see there's blue paint all over like obviously it's the wrong color but it looks like someone's done a full teardown on this engine and uh, detailed it anyway we've got that much going for us so I'll keep tearing down. I just uh, wanted to kind of document that before I went much further. We will carry on. I'm, uh, I'm dangerously optimistic right now. Seems to get better and better in here. I uh, did go ahead and just shoot some WD-40 over everything because it was looking very dry and, and almost a little sandy in here. It's just dirty. But... Uh, cam looks good uh, I don't know if I can show you this but those lifters have no buildup of carbon on them you can even like, get in there and move them very easily there's no like the lifter is not pumped up right now as you can see it just kind of dives inside there hasn't been oil pressure in this engine in a good long time <clears throat> Cylinders look, intake ports look generally pretty good. I'm seeing a bit of casting flash, so I'm going to be tempted to get in there and clean up. They're even painted inside, I'm not so sure that's a good thing either, but a little casting flash there to, to clean up. Such a different looking engine, but very happy with what I'm seeing so far. You know, besides the excessive amount of dirt, that's in here. Um, doesn't look like a lot of wear on this engine, so let's hope that pistons don't have holes in them. This is a little interesting to me. 
Um, you can see inside this port that it's got paint inside and that's an exhaust port. And this one too with a bunch of dirt, rusty dirt that's coming out. A little bit of rusty dirt in this one but still painted. So somebody went through the engine, painted it all, then didn't run it again. That scares me a little bit. Someone goes to the effort of painting an engine. You would think that they would run it in a car next, so maybe finance has changed. But as you can see, there's paint all inside those exhaust ports. That would have burned off very, very quickly had this engine been run. Okay, curiouser and curiouser. Well, here it is, folks. The, uh, true sign. Someone's been in here before and they cleaned everything up. There's a light oil on things. Somebody has taken the ridge off, it looks like. I can show you that. Someone's definitely been in here before. There's a hone. I'm not sure if that's a proper hone, but there's definitely hone marks in there. Looks like the gasket is pretty damn new. Uh, the head bolts came off extremely easily. I don't think they were torqued properly. Uh, this head gasket doesn't even look like it has proper full crush on it. You know, like just kind of showing a little bit of crush, but those came off very, very easily. We got a little bit of rust in that guy, but. Uh, uh, someone has done a ton of work for me already. I'm not like that's a very small ring gap, ring edge. Like I cannot. That one's got a little bit of rust on it, so that's kind of shitty. But I cannot get a nail to catch that. So I would say someone's been in here with the ridge reamer and taken that off already. But look how clean that cylinder is. Like someone's been in there and put a hone into it which is great news and I'm glad I didn't rotate it. I was going to shoot oil in it and rotate it, but you can see all the crap in there. So I'll just put a rubber hose on my vacuum, clean this all out really nicely, and then maybe rotate things a couple times for fun. But this is just great news. There's a lot of cleaning here I don't have to do. I mean, we'll We'll see what the bottom end looks like, but so far this is this is all good news. So it looks like exhaust valves have been replaced from the factory. Maybe that means they did seats. But all the valves are the same, so I would believe that all the exhaust valves have been changed already. Nice and clean in there, like someone put a bunch of time into this engine, cleaning it already. This was just a lottery here. There was an ad that came up that, uh, that this engine was for sale in Grand Prairie, about four hours north of here. And um, I had a buddy pick it up for me, I took a chance on it for a few hundred bucks. I figured what could go wrong and I'm really glad, at least right now, I'm really glad that I did. Because uh, it just looks excellent. I mean, look at how clean these are already. There's no carbon in there to speak of at all. A little bit of rust. We'll go ahead and pull those valves out and make sure they're seating properly. And yeah, it does have the dual springs uh, like Scott's did. It does look like there's a valve seal in there too, but pull those apart and get a better look in there. It's kind of hard to see. But yeah, pretty exciting so far. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't be happier. It's fantastic. Just pulling the lifters out. Thought I'd show you a close-up. Um, this is a new lifter. Like, they must have swapped the camshaft and thrown all new lifters in there. So, that's really nice. It's a nice little gift for me. 
and I was looking for a box to put it in and uh, I came upon my my Mopar performance camshaft and tappet package purple shaft baby this is what's in the uh, new port someone was asking me about cam specs and I couldn't quite remember so there they are 474 lift 290 advertised duration on a 110 center line so it's probably like 230 at 230 duration at 50 somewhere in there maybe not even that good but special notice off highway racing buddy yeah so hopefully uh, some of the Mopar performance will rub off on the on the Buick lifters because now I can put them all in here and keep everything kind of clean and tucked away stick the camshaft in there when I pull it out so carry on cleaning okay got her flipped over yank that starter off next looks familiar <clears throat> Everything's nicely painted for me. It's just got to be the right color. Unfortunately, that pan has taken a beating from years of storage, I would say. It's going to need a little hammer time to fix that up. But overall, not bad. Not bad. So let's go ahead and uh, yank this thing apart. Okay, oil pan's off. I like that it has little baffles holding the oil at the back. Whatever, some greasy, grimy gopher guts in there. Not, not great, but not bad. After we clean it up, beat it back into place, should be ready to go. Looks like they treated it to neoprene, neoprene gasket. That's kind of sweet. A little more junk in here. It's not. Doesn't look like pieces of metal anyway. So, not too worried about it. Just clean it up. Everything looks to be in place. It's very nice. Uh, one thing I do note though is it takes a good amount of force. Like I did spray oil in all the cylinders on the underside and the top just to try and get those rings lubed up a little and I sprayed oil in all the gaps of the bearings I don't know if WD-40 is going to creep in there or not but can't hurt to try right and as I try to rotate it over it takes a good amount of force like more than I would expect and that's concerning this is kind of cool here though. Looks like MC20, RC10, CE10761. I think this is a 61 motor, so looks like my mains are 20 under, rods 10 under. I kind of want to go ahead and uh, pull the rods out, inspect the rings, take a look at the bearings and the rods maybe pull a couple of caps if uh, bearings look good I may not pull that rear main seal apart because everything looks new in there and why waste why waste a new seal if I'm wrong it's going to suck but you can see that it's pretty clean inside there so it's not indicating that uh, not much of an indicator that the rear main seal is leaking same with up front so there's a little bit of seepage there but not too bad really I've dealt with them a lot worse so I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull a couple of rods out okay uh, piston out get a pretty good look at the cylinder walls now somebody has been inside here and prepared this block for a quick rebuild. A lot of rings and bearings. I want to run the rag in there. Just wipe that old walls clean. Get a better look. I'm trying to see a crosshatch pattern. Hmm. 
Definitely no ridge on top. Touch, like a, just a touch of a ridge on the bottom that my fingers can feel, but my nail cannot engage. And up here, like there's no way my thumb nail will catch on that. So I would say this engine had a very gentle life and then someone ripped it apart and decided to stick new bearings in it. I may have done this just by rotating the engine over today. And then they put new rings in it. And if you can see in that gap, uh, they've cleaned all the carbon out behind the rings, as you should, so that your rings can compress when you stick them in the block. So, some kind soul has gone and done all the shit work for me. Take a look at that bearing. And uh, pull it out, take a look at it. And you can see... Those are 010 US. Looks like they're stamped with an F and an M on them. Someone put brand new bearings in this guy and new rings and cleaned all the cylinder walls for me. It's not really a crosshatch that I was that I'm used to seeing. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at yet. But uh, it's not going to take much effort if I want to go and stick a quick hone in there. <clears throat> but that's pretty exciting news. So I can pull the rest of the pistons out just so I can clean all the cylinders, clean all the rings, uh, spray some oil in there, make sure they're all nice and clean. But uh, otherwise, I got myself an engine that just a little bit of cleaning is ready to go. And that's amazing. That that I couldn't expect better from a used engine that I expected to be a core. So fantastic. So my engine has new bearings, new rings already installed, pistons were already cleaned, and they prepped the cylinder walls. Back on the Buick today, I thought I would uh, plastic gauge a couple of the bearings. I took it apart last night. So before I strip all the rods out, I figured we'd do a quick test and might as well test the main at the same time. So I have put some, I cleaned it all up, took all the oil off the surfaces, um, stuck some plastic gauge in there. And I'm just eyeballing it, I can tell it's already really good. Let's take this rod apart. I just want to do this because I didn't put those bearings in, so I haven't measured anything before. That looks a little big, but... It's a little bit bigger than 002. Pretty close, though. So I'd say a little under 22 thou, which is right where we need it to be. Getting over to the rods. Obviously, less than 02 and uh, 015. Smaller. So somewhere between 015 and 02, which is perfect. It's going to be great so we can go ahead and uh, disassemble the rest of the rods. I'll put that main back on and uh, pull all the rods out then I can clean everything really well and uh, no reason why I shouldn't be able to begin reassembling the short block today. Uh, 
but yeah, classic timepieces, buddy. Thanks so much for stopping in. So your wife doesn't give you shit for smelling like weed when you come home from here, does she? No. Okay, good. Because that's going to happen. <laughs> The newest one is actually a 1940s Hamilton. 1940s it's, Hamilton, it's top of the line. It's US, US Air Force spec, so it's got all the writing on the back. So this is what basically a navigator on a B-17 or a B-24 would have had with them. It's a 24-hour watch, so it's calibrated in 24 hours. It's 7 a.m. in Greenwich Mean Time. The hour hand moves at half speed. No, yeah, well, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. So everything in aviation is done in Greenwich in Greenwich Mean Time or Zulu Time, even today. Okay. Yeah. Well, it makes sense when you can blow through time zones yeah. at 400 miles an hour. Exactly. It would be constantly be setting it every fucking five minutes. So yeah. when I fill out a flight plan here in Alberta, I would be using Zulu Time to put the flight plan together. So mm, that watch mm -hmm. is still useful today. Is this one you restored or you nope. found it in good shape? This one I got in good shape. It's um, it's a Hamilton. It's still dead accurate. And uh, so it's it's all the same guts as a, as a high-grade railroad watch. Really? So they would have only had to make a tiny change to make the hour hand run like that. Yeah. yeah Everything just else is just half as, or twice as many teeth on one yeah, gear. Everything exactly. else is the same. It's got a hack feature. So what happens mm -hmm. is, is when you pull the, like if you're synchronizing your watch, you pull that off and it stops. So everybody then synchronizes oh, their watch. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And that's that's why they did uh, it that way. That's right. That's uh, that's right. And I've seen that in the movies where all yeah. the, the robbers are like, okay, everybody synchronize. synchronize your watch. And yeah. I was always like, how do they do that? The second hand doesn't stop, that's, but it actually it does. does stop. It actually does. So there you go. When you got to rob the railroad, remember to get the <laughs> railroad grade watch. That's the first one. That's fantastic. What is sorry? G C. It's the T. Yeah, uh, Greenwich Central Time or whatever. Okay. Uh, they only made them from 42 to about 50. Mm-hmm. So they kept making them after the war. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And what superseded this then? What's better than this that would have... Nothing. Like the same thing. There's nothing better. Nothing. No, nope, they didn't make anything before that. That's the standard of that watch is there is nothing better. There is so. nothing better, yeah. So where do we go from there? So this one, <laughs> where do we go from there? Now that there? there's nothing better, actually, show me the next watch. Actually, this one is... Slightly better? Just about as good. It's it's a Rockford. This is an 18, 1889 Rockford 15 Jewel, 18 size, in a gold-filled case, and it's dead accurate. I set it two weeks ago, and I haven't had to set it. It's an, that's an American company. American, and... No longer with No us. longer, no. They when went did, they went belly up in nineteen fifteen. This one looks pretty original. It's yeah, it's a nice it's a nice one. It, I don't haven't had to touch that one either. Look at the hands. I'm gonna have to get you of course you guys would be looking at a close up of the hands right now. And then if you open it up. Oh yes. It's two tone two tone metal. Oh. Brass and nickel. So is it it's nickel plated jewel. brass? It's nickel plated or brass. Or they've actually yeah. milled through the nickel yeah. plating. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's how they did. And how, and the way that they got those, what is that uh, called when the, the damaskining or whatever? It's yeah, called yeah, it. it's. They did a beautiful because it, it looks like the the little wheels are turning as you move it, or it could be just because it's Saturday night. Oh, look at the little adjuster there. That's your you set mm -hmm. your uh, yeah fast or slow. Uh, also with machine-like precision, and I mean, all that stuff was made in 1889. You could dial that all day long, but as soon as you move this thing downstairs or carry it around for a while, that's the right? Nice, like you reach a point. No, nah, that's the nice thing about an American watch. You set that thing and forget it. So you can like, it's... It's going to be... This, so you can actually adjust it like yeah. seconds a day. That's You're right. like, oh, I lost three seconds today, and you can actually get you that. You can actually dial it in. That, that, that's that's why they, crazy. That thing actually loses 10 seconds a day. Mm -hmm. It's that accurate, mm -hmm. and it's 1889, and that's why you know, like an American watch is just the best watch ever made. It's a bit hypnotic, but it is Saturday night. Yeah, <laughs> it's Saturday night. It's just the precision that amazes me. Like, you know, Especially like people can't like get their closet doors to close. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then there's other people that can do this. And then they're building watches. You know, like. That. Yeah. like here. Watch number three today. Watch number three. This one, I just got this in the mail. It's English. It's uh, from 1839. And it's a three-quarter plate 
um, movement, so I haven't had one of those before. And it's made by a guy by the name of Waldeck, F. Waldeck, and he's a listed maker. He belonged to the London Guild in the mid 19th century. So London, London, yeah. and what do you mean by three quarter what? It's a three quarter plate. So like, what that are you basically, about this? yeah, yeah. Okay. So three quarters of the plate covers, and the balance wheel is inside, as opposed to being on top, like on the 89 here. And that one's also a chain drive, so it's got a little fusee chain oh my God. in it, and uh, it's running not too bad. It's got some issues, but uh, well, after 100 and yeah, uh, right, 80 years, it, yeah, it's, it's coming up 180 something, and. There's the winder. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's key wind, key set. <laughs> you can see I'm a real expert, eh? Is that where you wind it? Yes, because the mainspring powers everything, and this one That's just right. serves as a pendulum. That's right. It just so it up. has to be neutral when mm -hmm. you install it. That's right. So when you're trying to control the speed, you're really just... Shortening that spring so it moves, so it oscillates faster, or right. So or this thing, this shorter. weighted wheel, it the per the basic principle is that it has a natural regulating yeah. tendency. Oh, but then you have the fuse chain well, in order to chain, reduce the yeah. torque when it's wound tight. That's right. So the chain with the tapered cone cone yeah. shape is to, and you notice that it's actually a, a it's not a straight it's like a sine wave mm -hmm. that's exactly it yeah you'll see that more on the other one here oh yeah <laughs> like we don't have enough shit to nerd out of on this <laughs> show eh? just like it's seven jewels the british never they never they never really were big on jewels yeah okay so what does the bearing surface then uh just brass the brass itself so right so, so the jewels we'll, are we'll just like wobble. a next level almost. yeah they're like a bearing yeah like so that, there. but that's the level of engineering we need to get to to get mm -hmm. any better than this, which would take right. people. Somebody yeah. just says, "Make me a watch." Make me a watch. Ten seconds a day. It took them two hundred years to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. It would take you two hundred years of the finest craftsmen in the world all competing against each other as hard as they can. And they have brought with them a thousand generations of experience, and now people need a sticker that says, "Don't drink the battery." <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly like, this guy wasn't drinking the battery acid <laughs> no, not no, by accident no, not no. deliberately no. he didn't need the sticker exactly right? what he was doing okay that's <clears throat> a beauty so this one here the last one is the oldest and it goes back to about 1764 it's a pair case this should actually be a, um, a gold filled case but it's got a silver one instead mm -hmm. so and it needs some body work it doesn't quite fit right Mm -hmm. I might have to get you to do something with that thing. I don't know. I'm not very good with that. A little bondo. It's gold filled, so most of the gold's all worn off. Yeah. But inside, like you can see, that there was Holy. some. Holy. Okay, so this guy is also a fusee, but it's a Verge fusee. And as I said, about 1764, so it's 200 years older than me. And look at the metal work on that. It's all hand pierced. It hardly even seems possible that people could do that in 1764 oh well that anybody could do it ever like and there you can see the fuse look at the thing though but look it's how like some crazy fairground in there yeah it's really cool but then look how small it all is and that's what blew me away is you know how tiny that thing is and how you know like how miniature they made it well, and don't miss an opportunity to put some fucking decorations down mm -hmm. inside there, like exactly. Like look at look at the way it's suspended on these like pillars, like it's a building. Mm -hmm. Like those look like outside of a bank. Yeah, it's called. <laughs> those are called square pillars. Square pillars. There yeah, because then the later ones had round ones. Yeah, yeah. And then the even earlier and the ones. the pins inside the pins and everything's yeah. just like do 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 do. Oh mm, well, yeah, look fiddly. To fiddly doesn't really fucking cover it here, right? <laughs> no, like, no. I mean, I like stuff that's fiddly, but I that's, would fucking that kill takes it myself. to a whole this different is like level. Black belt fiddly. Actually, to take it apart takes no time at all. Putting it back together is about a five or six hour job, and that is if you got a good supply of pins, because I mean the thing is, well, the worst sound going, in the world. Ding. 
is when you have them in your tweezers and you're trying to feed it into that little tiny hole, yeah, and, and all you hear is ting, and it's, it's fuck. Gone. You'll never see that ever never again. Never see it again. Yeah. So it's just unreal. Like, it looks like something from a from a like the hobbit you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost supernaturally crafty you know that's what i love about those yeah. things. no this is like incredible art. work this is art and just like an old lady it'd be impolite to ask so i won't ask if it keeps time it does bullshit it's really? actually not too far off yeah yeah son of a and that's really something with a verge because usually they gain or lose five minutes a day. Right, It's right. normal for them. Yeah, okay. But five, five minutes a day is not 25. No. Five minutes a day you can kind of, get, yeah. you don't have to do any math. When you're <clears> and it does it. even have an adjustment there. That other I wheel, see that, yeah. That other wheel there. Oh, you it's can, just you can so it. absolutely spectacular. This is mind-blowing. Amazing. All right. Those Thanks for bringing those over, buddy. Yeah, no sweat. Okay, we got to combine watches and mail. The reason I waited for Mark to get here, because this one says old watch. So, old watch. see, these guys are building watches. I can't <laughs> open the box. <laughs> the letter. I'll get the letter open here. Okay. Oh, Holy look at that. shit. What was that? Real money. $100? That's crazy. Hi Scott, Frankers and Agents love the show and never miss an episode. I bought this wristwatch a while back for scrap. It was nice to send to the crusher and uh, so I want you to have it. It seems to work okay. I'm sure Mark can sort it out for you. <laughs> also two loops, four and a seven power. I can use those to do my job and maybe you'll you'll need That's someone cool. to look at something close up. That's a good idea to have a loop. Again, love the show and give Frankers a pet for me. Fast Frank. Hey, look at that. Thanks so much, buddy. Wow. Yeah, loops. I can get my jacket clean. Then you can get your jacket clean. It's about fucking time, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make Dean look bad. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you have to basically... Oh, you put it down. You put it down. No, nice. either that or you put it in your eye like this. Hey, guys. Battery died while we were filming that uh, segment there with Mark. And I didn't uh, get to show a close-up of this beautiful watch that uh, Fast Frank sent. Can you believe that? This is a Chevrolet 25-year uh, retirement watch, I believe. Or at least a 25-year service watch. Gentleman's name... Harley L. Huey worked at the Chevrolet plant from 1929 to 1955. It's probably a retirement presentation. I was reading in Frank's note and he said it came in for scrap and he just couldn't bear to see it scrapped. And uh, I didn't know really what that meant until I was talking to Mark and what he meant was that this is a solid gold case. So of course People would take watches like this and melt them down because the value of the gold is 99% of the value of the watch. So, Frank, uh, for somebody to uh, send a solid gold watch to somebody they've never met is quite amazing. I don't know what to say, man. It is so extremely kind of you. Uh, Mark and I were looking at it. It's an Elgin watch. It's a very nicely made, high-quality piece. And it's in excellent condition, and I'm going to probably get Mark to put a new uh, crystal on it. And it's going to be the watch that I get to wear for driving my 37 Chevy. Anyway, looking at the date on the back, there is a very small chance that the person who owned this watch first assembled that 37 Chevy downstairs. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Just such a kind thing. Thank you so much, man. I don't know what to say. What a what a crazy generous thing to do. Cheers. Okay. This is from our friend Mitka. Okay. Hi Scott. Nineteen this nineteen fifties Tivo Capitan is a fitting watch for the Admiral of Crappy Old Barges in the Garden, aka me. I have serviced the movement and uploaded a video for your enjoyment of the 
Lovely A.S. Calibra mm -hmm. 1560. You can find it okay. on my YouTube channel at Mitka Watch or type in TiVo Capitan Service. Keep up the great content. Best regards, Mitka. Mitka Watch. Yeah, I watched it. Thank you so much. That is cool. Isn't that nice? That's TiVo beautiful. TiVo Capitan. Okay. Yeah. Swiss made. A.S. That's a shield movement. Um, it's not the Wehrmachtswerk, which would be the, uh, what is it, 1130, I think it is. A Tivo Capitaine. I wonder who, um, so this might be a generic Swiss. Yeah, I think that was what he mentioned in the video. Yeah, so Swiss made, anti-magnetic, anti waterproof. And it's got a screw back and you're looking about 1940s, 1950s. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's black. Which is gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. I am uh, spoiled. Runs beautifully. Always wind it forward, never back. That's a good tip. Never set the time. And what about just a few minutes, though? A few minutes. But don't right. go brr, 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 That's brr, right. in reverse. Yeah, never go Take in reverse. Take all the backlash out of it. Yeah. Look at that. That's two really two nice pieces. Top end watches. Top very nice. end. Yeah, he did a That's video good. of taking it all apart and fixing it up. Cool. And it was uh, it was pretty barked up, okay. pretty dirty. He makes one of the pieces for it. Oh, really? A little mini lathe, and oh, he's got okay. one of these machines that measures the mm -hmm. the timekeeping of it, and he can okay. test it, yeah, and he yeah. puts it in this way, and it goes mm -hmm. beep, 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 and he puts it in this way. I've got it, one of those, yeah. 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 So it's, he goes, go, gives her the whole fucking once over. Yeah. That's quite something. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So you got to, that's, that's very a, well That's a totally service. ready for the rest of your life watch. Yep. What car, though? 1940s, 50s? That nice. would look good in that Citroën downstairs. Oh, I like that in the traction. This is the yeah, traction of that's your, tra that's your traction of Avant. That's your... a great idea. 37 Chevy watch. Yeah. And you already gave me the SM watch, which is that yeah. digital thing. I love that watch. It's still so like, that's saving yeah. for the SM. Oh, yeah. I, I like this game, actually. This is cool. This is a fun game. Thank you guys both so much for some absolutely, absolutely just thrilling Killer timepieces, yes. Really, really just so grateful. What a... What a pair. I don't think they could have a better home. I mean, I won't let Frankers wreck them. <laughs> no. I, I really tried not to get any more collecting sicknesses. Like, yeah, and we're closing in on 10 guitars now. 10 guitars? Now yeah. you got some pretty, now pretty you good got watches. A couple of really nice watches. Well, yeah. four or five now. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get nuts. you into some old pocket watches, and away you go. Well, that. Uh, that is a nice case. Yeah. No, dude, it's so professional. So you guys uh, go over there and give Mitka a subscribe, and he's got the I'm car sickness really bad too. He's yeah. a—I won't call him a sad bastard because he's not. He's super nice, but he has the car sickness really bad and the watch sickness. So uh, yeah, go over there and subscribe and encourage him to keep ruining his life with all of this stuff because <laughs> it's just so so awesome. Yeah, just it's so great. perfect. Thank you guys. In matching black, the perfect timepiece for the Citroën Traction Avant. Thanks again so much, man. What an absolute treat. See you next time. Hey guys, thanks again so much for watching the show this week. As always, we had a great time putting it together. And uh, as always, a very sincere thank you to the patrons of the show uh, who make it possible to do this. Uh, it's very kind of you guys and uh, very much appreciated. Uh, thanks to anybody who uh, pushed the old like button and leave a comment. It really does help the show get seen, and we got to do everything we can, frankly. Oh, and please double check if you think you're subscribed to the show. Uh, YouTube is unsubscribing about two-thirds of the new subscribers from the show, or at least for every three people that subscribe, YouTube unsubscribes too. Whatever. I'm not changing the show. I don't really give a shit what YouTube thinks. It's, uh, it's not changing. It's, it's for you guys, and especially the patrons. You guys keep it going. I would have quit many years ago. 
having a great time. Really looking forward to this summer. Uh, I know it seems a little slow around here right now. We've got a lot going on. I'm just not filming a lot of the sanding and a lot of the sewing and stuff like that. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to getting towards springtime. We're going to have some massive projects coming up this summer. Probably more than I should take on, but there's going to be a lot of uh, big and exciting uh, body splices and crazy uh, type of uh, restoration stuff going on. So I hope looking forward to that as much as I am. Uh, the weather is starting to turn, so maybe sometime in the next eight weeks we're going to get real uh, get real busy here. Hope you guys all have a terrific week. Thanks again so much. And thank you, of course, to Mitka and Fast Frank for the fabulous wristwatches. So everybody, uh, please have a terrific week, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers. This is a regular Ash, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>